Hello friends, Dr. Renee Tucker here, back at you with another fascinating podcast, I hope. This one is on head shaking. Okay, head shaking is also called head flicking. So however you want to call it, we're talking about the behavior. Instead of just shaking your head because there's flies, the horse is incessantly shaking their head. It can be a lateral normal shake, but more commonly it's called head flicking because the horse will flick the nose forward, just constantly moving the nose up and forward, uh, almost in a rhythmic motion at times, and it drives you crazy. (laughs) Sometimes it can be so violent too that it will pull the reins right out of your hands. Some horses just flick their heads. Other horses need to rub their nose like on their leg. Just these behaviors that can get so bad, they become unrideable, and some horses are even put to sleep. So if you're completely unfamiliar with head shaking, may I recommend you pause this podcast and take a look on YouTube. Just put in equine head shaking, and there are so many examples of head shaking, you'll really know what I'm talking about. Okay. Head shaking is happening because the cranial nerves aren't working right. That is what most people believe the cause of head shaking is, is cranial nerve problem. And and that is sort of correct. Uh, So I'm going to expand on that, of course, and hopefully make it fun and exciting. Okay, not really, but here we go. What should happen with the head and the cranial nerves? All right. Cranial nerves are nerves that are anywhere in the head. There's 12 of them. And just for um, people who love this kind of information, they are in order of their name. Cranial nerve one is olfactory, so that's smelling. Optic nerve, that's seeing. Oculomotor nerve is number three, so that's moving the eye. A trochlear nerve, that's ear. Trigeminal is the face. Abducens nerve, the facial nerve, more face stuff, vestibular, cochlear nerve, glossopharyngeal, that's the tongue, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal nerve. Okay, now there will be a quiz. Okay, just kidding. That's the 12 of them. I hope it gave you the idea that all these 12 go directly to certain portions of the brain responsible for that item. So, say the ocular nerve ocular cranial nerve goes from the head portion back to the brain and directly to the part of the brain that's responsible for the eye. So it's very direct. There should be a signal from those cranial nerves to the brain whenever there is a stimulus. For example, a lot of horses have head shaking when they move from shadow to sunlight. It's kind of crazy. There's a lot of different triggers for head shaking. This is one of the more common ones. So if the horse is moving from shadow to sunlight, their uh, cranial nerve, the input to the brain should be, hey, there is sun on my face. And the brain will be like, ah, thank you for the information. I will now constrict the iris so that I am not blinded. And that would be that. That doesn't happen with the head shaking horse. Instead, what's happening is the inputs from the cranial nerves to the brain, it's like they're magnified. They're so much louder and so much more frequent that instead of hearing one simple input, hey, there is sun on my face. Instead, the brain hears a lot of it and loudly and it comes into, hey, 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 hey. And the brain just is trying to process that, but it's too much and it's too often and too loud. It drives the horses crazy. The horses do whatever behavior they can to try to dull that sound. Okay. And that includes many different types of movements, but mostly the head shaking or head flicking. All right. When science has gone to mm, dissect the nerves and see, hey, what is wrong with these nerves? What's going on? They can't find anything. 
Okay, that's because it's not the nerves themselves. You want to know what it is? Well, I'll tell you. It's heavy metals. You're like, not that again. You were just talking about heavy metals with kissing spine. That's correct. They're back again. By the way, I have gotten a number of questions about heavy metals. So uh, as I finish my head shaking topic during this podcast at the end, I'll talk some more generic stuff about heavy metals. Okay. So for head shaking, it's mostly aluminum. Aluminum is considered a heavy metal and there's aluminum. Okay. So the body gets aluminum on the face. More about that later. And it gets absorbed into the head. And where does aluminum love to go? Right along the nerves, right in between the nerves and the protective like sock that's on it, the dura mater. You may be familiar with dura mater or dura mater, however you pronounce it. There's dura mater along the spinal cord. And actually it does continue along big important nerves, not all of them, well, okay, all the important ones, <laughs> who knows what's important, but all the big ones, it's extra protection on certain nerves and definitely some, not all, but some of the cranial nerves. And it generally doesn't go all the way to the itty bitty end point of the nerve, but just on the, the thicker part. Okay, it's a tough protection. So you got the nerve and then you have the electrical impulses that the nerve sends to the brain. They run along the nerve like a highway and then that highway is completely protected and enclosed with dura mater okay my point in bringing up this dura mater and like what do i care about that that's where the aluminum goes to it sticks in the dura mater so instead of there being one simple signal hey there is sun on my face the aluminum embedded within that dura mater causes the signal to go really slow and amplify and increase its frequency. As an example, this might help. Um, you could think of the dura mater as a highway and when you're speeding along it, it's beautiful. It just zoop and there you go down the road. Now, if there are a lot of potholes on a highway, then it's a big problem. If you try to go fast on a road that has a lot of potholes, you're going to bounce all over the place. You're going to go zing, 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 hit your head on the top of the car. I mean, it's going to be terrible. So it just gives so much more momentum to the signal that it amplifies it because of these potholes, which I'm calling, because of the aluminum that's lining the dirt matter. So that's kind of what's going on. I mean, that is what's going on. It's too much signal, too loud, too frequent. It drives the horse nuts. They flick their head, I believe, because any other input, moving the head, scratching the head, rubbing it, any other input is going to dull these amplified signals so they're not quite gone crazy. Um, I know people do a lot of different treatments for, uh, head shaking. Let me just give you a quick list. I'm sure this is not all encompassing. Some of these treatments work and some do not work. And it just at the moment seems to be very individual. So people try all of these trying to find an answer. This is the short list. Melatonin and not in any order, by the way. Melatonin, magnesium oxide, allergex pellets, shake aid, platinum steady, gabapentin, CBD pellets, dexamethasone, nerve injections, cutting the nerves, vitamins such as B12, B complex, calcium citrate, vitamin E, magnesium, boron, salt, spirulina, foxton, valerian. Okay, all of these choices. Are, are fine if they work for your horse don't stop using them but what all those are doing is either helping the body get rid of aluminum or they are decreasing the inputs 
of the nerves. In the case of gabapentin, that's what that's doing. It's just slowing all impulses so the horse is not so overloaded with impulses going into the brain, driving you crazy. Okay, so those are all fine. Some alternative therapy that works well, acupuncture, cranial therapy can work, and my own therapy, TBT, which is Tucker Biokinetic Technique, works wonderfully helping to get rid of heavy metals. I'll talk more about that in heavy metal section. Now, you may wonder, can't the body get rid of aluminum itself? Well, yes, it can. Unfortunately, there's a trifecta of problems going on with this uh, head shaking thing. So for those of you with head shakers, you might want to know this. So can the body remove aluminum? Yes. The first line of defense, if it's not in the intestinal tract, I'm sorry, I said that a little bit wrong, but basically the first line of defense is parasites. So if the aluminum was in the intestinal tract, then the parasites, are it's easy for them to just suck the aluminum out and they get pooped out. When the aluminum is in the face, can the parasites get there? Yes. They're very small, but they could get there if they were alive. But mostly we're over deworming. And deworming at all, in my opinion, is over deworming. Just stop doing it. The second line of defense is the immune system component. Now, all of the immune system cannot handle heavy metals, just certain components and one major one. And I'm going to call that immune system component Super L. See, L, it's short for aluminum. Get it? Okay. Like Superman? Okay. So yes, there is this immune system component, Super L, who comes to the rescue when there's no parasites to get rid of that aluminum. Super L will go and grab it out of the dura mater, take it over to the liver, who will then process it, and it goes then to the digestive system. There is not a third line of defense. That's it. Parasites or the super owls. You say, great, let's make more super owls. Okay, and I love that thought. And the body is trying to do that, and it's trying to get more parasites going too. Here's a problem. One is, this is my, uh, my trifecta of problems here. If the body is super overloaded with heavy metals, the liver cannot deal with all of them. The heavy metals damage the liver itself. The liver can fix itself. Livers can regenerate, which is super cool. But they can only handle so much. If the liver can't handle it, it will store heavy metals. You want to guess where they store it? Okay, I can hear your guesses, but I know you're getting them right. The first place they store it is in fat. Do you know that the body will actually create fat just so it can store heavy metals in it? Because heavy metals will not be hurting the body when they're stored in fat. So yes, that I believe that is definitely a big issue with why 60% of America is overweight. It's heavy metals. And then yes, it also is part of the metabolic syndrome of the horse where they put on fat pads and they're weird fat pads. That's because they're filled up with heavy metals. More on that some other podcast. Okay. So the liver's overloaded with heavy metals. It can't deal with it. It stores it first in fat. And then you know where else it stores it? In the bone marrow. Kind of weird, but... Maybe the body's thinking, oh, there's space in there. We'll put it over there. It's got to put it someplace. Guess where the super owls are made? In the bone marrow. If there's heavy metals in the bone marrow, production of the super owls is way, way down. Okay. So you can see how this is a problem. We need the body to get rid of this aluminum but it's overloaded, so it stores it, and it stores it, in some cases, in the bone marrow, where the superals are made. Superals being that component of the immune system 
that can get rid of aluminum. Is that bad enough? Why, no. Here's the other part. There's a lot of parts to these. The dura mater. Remember that dura mater, which is kind of encompassing the nerve and that the nerve signals zip around. The dura gets injured, potholed, by the aluminum. Naturally, the dura mater would like to fix itself. So it should be able to tell the body that is, hey, hey, body, guys, guys, come over here and fix me. I am super busy and injured. Come on on. You know how the dura mater tells the body it needs help? It tells the body via these little components, whatever, called neuropeptides. And that's really a fun word to say. You should try it. Neuropeptide. Okay. Anyways, the dura doesn't make its own neuropeptides. It gets them from the liver, which, as you recall, is already being damaged and overloaded by heavy metals. Therefore, there are less neuropeptides to transport to the dura, so the dura can say, help me. This is nasty, people. This is horrific. And if you have a horse who's got heavy metals, Gosh, I totally feel for you. It's just awful. You try and everything. And some things work a little. Some things don't work so well. It really depends on how loaded your horse is, how their immune system is, how their liver is, their parasites, all that. And it's a lot of little pieces. All those make a difference in the individual response to treatments makes a difference which cranial nerves are affected and how your horse is behaving. Oh, it's just a lot. So I hope you can see, I didn't mention this earlier, but one of the treatments people do besides giving the horse some, you know, thing, some supplement is using face masks or nose nets or nose guards or some other kind of pressure. So again, that different input is going to change the horse's inputs to its brain so that the crazy aluminum inputs are kind of calmed down. All right, so once again, we are dealing with trying to get rid of heavy metals. Now we talked about doing liver cleanses, liver support, herbal stuff. Those are all still good and still on the table. Um, let me s just segue for a minute for my head shaking talk. Okay. Sorry. From my head shaking talk to my heavy metals. Here's what they are. Okay. Heavy metals are just, you remember that periodic table from chemistry? I'm sure it was your favorite thing, but they're just about 23, uh, heavy metals. Here's a short list. Uh, aluminum and then barium, antimony, arsenic, bismuth, cadmium, cerium, chromium, cobalt, copper, gallium, lead, iron, gold, manganese, mercury, nickel, platinum, silver, tellurium, thallium, tin, uranium, vanadium, and zinc. Well, that was fun. You don't have to remember that. There will not be a quiz on this. Probably. Okay. You may have noticed some of these we actually need. We need some copper, some iron, uh, some zinc, certainly. A little tiny bit of some of these heavy metals is fine. It's when there are so much of them that they become toxic. Um, heavy metal toxicity lowers energy levels, damages the functioning of brain, lungs, kidney, liver, blood composition, other organs. Long-term exposure can lead to gradually progressing physical, muscular, and neurological degenerative processes that imitate diseases such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and muscular dystrophy, and may even cause cancer. They are bad. Okay, again, the overload, the way too many of them. Where do they come from? 
you're probably thinking to yourself, listen, lady, I don't give my horse heavy metals, so I he can't possibly have that. Well, heavy metals is in fertilizer, pesticides, and herbicides. You may think, rightly so, you're not pouring those on your horse. You're not pesticiding your horse or herbiciding your horse. True, but they are doing that to the hay. The fertilizer, the pesticides, the herbicides, those are in the hay. And I don't know if you've heard this already, but one of the leading herbicides, uh, Roundup, is glycophosphate. Glycophosphate has been found in the breast milk of women in every country in the whole world. Whether or not that country uses glycophosphate, it gets into the water table. So even if you or your organic farmer does not use pesticides or herbicides, it's in a lot of the water table or the ground itself. So it's really in there. I promise you, we all have heavy metals. Um, you may have heard the stories that they've found lead in baby food. There's crazy heavy metals in food that shouldn't be there. There are heavy, heavy metals in vaccines. There are heavy metals in the chemtrails that are in the sky. Now, I know, or I heard of chemtrails, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. I thought, oh, that's some crazy conspiracy thing. And I, if you're still thinking that, I would invite you to look at the congressional testimony, which I think was two years ago in the U.S. And they talked about, oh, yeah, we do that. We fly planes over America and other worlds, other, worlds, other countries as well. One of the minor ones is they talk about, um, what's it called? Cloud seeding. Cloud seeding where they dump silver iodide to create rain. Okay, that's still toxic. Let me read to you this paragraph, which is from the web browser Brave. You will not find this information on Google or YouTube because they are suppressing this type of information. I off, uh, recommend you check it for yourself. Type in chemtrails on Google and then type in chemtrails on a different browser. The one I use is Brave. They're, none of them are perfect, but just so here you know. Chemtrails are a term used to describe the presence of metals in the air that increase the known conductivity of the atmosphere, allowing HARP systems, HARP is H-A-A-R-P, HARP systems to change weather patterns, create hurricanes, cause drought, floods, and more. Aluminum is one of the major chemicals in chemtrails, along with radioactive thorium and cesium, copper, titanium, silicone, lithium, cobalt, lead, ethylene dibromide, and several pathological agents. Um, and then there's a whole lot of stuff about causing more gelins. Chemtrails are not being sprayed to block the sun, just so you know, but to enable weather warfare and the use of directed energy and frequency technology attacks on the population. So that's fine. Believe it or not, it's on there. You can do your research and enjoy that rabbit trail. It's fun. But what we really care about is our horses. And we really, other than riding your congressman, can't do much about chemtrails ourselves. Try to ask for organic food food, try to decrease vaccines as much as humanly possible, and try to clear the heavy metals with liver support. And you can use some immune support, but you want to always for these herbal things do 30 days on and 30 days off. It just gives the body a time to reset. Liver, immune system, 30 days on, 30 days off with any herbal stuff. Okay, uh, lastly, I just wanted to mention how does TBT, my energy work, help with heavy metals, which is going to be even more weird, but whatever, it works. With TBT, we do energy work. The key to energy work is realizing everything is energy, right? Not just energy in the electrical cords, but at the quantum level, 
the chair you might be sitting on is all energy. Even though we, we see and feel it as solid, it's still all energy when you get down below the subatomic level. Like, okay, okay, everything's all energy. Yeah, I get that, sure. Well, that's where TBT works, at the quantum level. So just to keep this simple, for the heavy metals, heavy metals are microscopic, but still theoretically solid, but not at the quantum level. The quantum level, they're just energy too. So TBT can remove the energy of the heavy metals. Now, I know it'd be super cool if you could just see aluminum dripping off your horse when TBT person was working on you. That would be super cool, but that's not what happens. It's more like, best example I can think of is if you have a blown up balloon. Okay, you got a blown up balloon. It's um, big and it's kind of tough really and filled up with stuff, a lot of energy. And if you deflate the balloon, it's much smaller, flexible, easy to handle. So with TBT, effectively, we're taking the air out of the balloon, the energy of the heavy metals out. So it's so much more easy for the horse to deal with that remaining deflated balloon heavy metals and take it out from there. So I I know that's really not satisfactory as an explanation. It's just really difficult to convey energy work simply because we don't have the language. So I got to keep using weird examples and it's just seems silly, but guys, it really works. So other than trying your best to avoid heavy metals and clear those out of your horse, that is the answer for head shaking. If you would like to look for a TBT practitioner, many of them are listed on where does my horse hurt.com slash practitioners. And then you are all welcome to join the TBT University, which you can find more info at tuckerbiokinetic.com. Okay, I hope this made sense. It was kind of a complex topic. Please don't hesitate to send me any questions to support at double, uh, sorry, support at tuckerbiokinetic.com. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.